2025, the GPU market is more confusing than ever, especially if you're shopping on a tight budget. Do you go for a newer entry-level card like the RX 6600 with its efficient RDNA 2 architecture and solid 1080p performance? Or do you take a gamble on an older flagship like the GTX 1070, a card that ruled the mid-range back in 2016, but now shows up for cheap on the used market? At first glance, this might seem like a one-sided battle after all. The RX 6600 is a much newer card with support for modern features like hardware accelerated ray tracing and more efficient power draw. But the GTX 1070 still holds its ground surprisingly well, especially in non-RT workloads and in some cases offers excellent value for the money if you can find one in good condition. So today we're diving deep into this matchup, GTX 1070 vs RX 6600. We'll cover specs, gaming benchmarks, power efficiency, driver support, and most importantly, which one actually makes more sense to buy in 2025. Let's start with a quick look at the specs. The GTX 1070, released back in 2016, was part of NVIDIA's Pascal lineup, and at the time, it was a beast. It features 8GB of GDDR5 memory, a 256-bit memory bus, and around 6.5 teraflops of raw compute power. Power draw sits at 150 watts, and while it doesn't support ray tracing or DLSS, it was known for delivering excellent performance per dollar back in its prime. On the other hand, we have the RX 6600, launched in late 2021 as part of AMD's RDNA 2 generation. It also comes with 8GB of VRAM, but this time it's faster GDDR6, although the memory bus is cut down to 128-bit, which might sound like a downgrade. However, RDNA 2 makes up for it with architectural improvements and better bandwidth efficiency. The RX 6600 delivers around 8.9 teraflops, has full hardware ray tracing support, and sips just 132 watts, making it far more power efficient. So, on paper, the RX 6600 looks like the smarter pick. But, as we all know, specs don't always tell the full story. Let's see how these two actually perform in real-world gaming. Cyberpunk 2077. This game is brutal on hardware, and here the RX 6600 pulls ahead. RX 6600 averaged around 58 FPS on high settings, while the GTX 1070 managed about 42 FPS. In fast-paced competitive shooters like Apex, both cards deliver a smooth experience. The GTX 1070 holds a solid 120 to 130 FPS on high, while the RX 6600 pushes a bit further at 140 to 150 FPS. If you're rocking a high refresh rate monitor, both will serve you well here. But the RX 6600 has the edge in frame pacing and 1% lows. Hogwarts Legacy With heavier textures and larger open-world maps, this is where VRAM bandwidth and driver optimization come into play. RX 6600 averages 60 to 65 FPS on high, with FSR turned on, while the GTX 1070 lags behind at 38 to 45 FPS and occasional stutters are more common. Again, newer architecture and driver support give AMD the upper hand. Even in a more optimized title like RDR2, RX 6600, around 70 FPS on balanced settings. GTX 1070 equals around 55 FPS on similar presets. The difference isn't massive, but it's noticeable, and especially in denser areas. In lighter esports titles, the gap shrinks. GTX 1070 can still hit 160 plus FPS in Fortnite on performance mode. RX 6600 goes even higher, but both feel snappy. So for competitive players, both cards are very viable, even today. Overall, the RX 6600 wins in every single title tested, sometimes by a small margin, sometimes by a lot, especially in newer or more demanding games. But to be fair, the GTX 1070 still puts up a respectable fight. For a nearly 9-year-old GPU, it's impressive that it can still push 60 FPS or more in many modern titles, especially if you tweak a few settings. So, in terms of raw gaming performance, the RX 6600 clearly takes the crown. But performance isn't the only factor. Next, let's talk about features, driver support, and efficiency, areas that matter a lot for longevity. Ray tracing and upscaling. The GTX 1070 doesn't support hardware ray tracing or DLSS, it's simply too old. 
The RX 6600 does support ray tracing, but don't expect miracles once it's usable in lighter games but struggles in heavier titles. What really helps is FSR, which works great on the 6600 and gives it a real edge in modern games. In 2025, NVIDIA has moved on from fully supporting Pascal cards like the 1070. You'll still get critical updates, but no game-specific optimizations. The RX 6600, being a much newer card, still receives full driver support from AMD, meaning better performance in new releases and improved stability. The RX 6600 is the clear winner here drawing around 130 watts compared to 150 watts on the 1070 while delivering better performance. It also runs cooler and quieter, which is great for small form factor builds or older power supplies. Next, let's talk about pricing. The GTX 1070 can often be found for $70 to $100 depending on condition. It's cheap and that's its biggest strength, but you are taking a risk with aging hardware. Some cards have been running hot for nearly a decade. The RX 6600, on the other hand, usually sells for around $120 to $150. That's a bit more upfront, but you're getting a newer GPU with better performance, modern features, and longer support. When you factor in power efficiency and driver updates, the RX 6600 offers better long-term value, even if it costs slightly more. Still, for ultra-budget build, like sub-300 PCs, a well-priced GTX 1070 might make sense if you're comfortable buying used and know what to look for.